my name is Nora Frank. I'm the lead aquarist here at the Sea Center. I'm originally from the Big Island of Hawaii. I began scuba diving essentially as early as I could and from then on I knew I wanted to study marine science and involve myself in some sort of conservation and messaging with the public. So I went to University of California, Santa Barbara where I studied aquatic biology. During my time at UCSB, I was the tropical aquarist and the lead aquarist at the reef. That's where I received my initial training in animal husbandry and facility maintenance. This was also the first opportunity I had to work with an endangered species. At the reef, we had both white abalone and black abalone. The white abalone are one of seven local species. Abalone make up a vital role in the function of the ecosystem because they are important for grazing down that understory algae, clearing space for new animals to come and settle in that space. I like to say they're the lawnmowers of the ocean. Abalone also play an important role around the Chumash culture that's local to our Santa Barbara coast. Abalone were used not only as food, but their shells were also used for jewelry and trade. Then and today, it actually holds some cultural significance. With the Santa Barbara area and the Channel Islands being as biologically productive as they are, this also made a great area for large and rich abalone fisheries. Around the early 1900s, even at the base of Stearns Wharf, this was a highly productive and active area for both commercial and recreational abalone fisheries. Beginning around the 1970s, they saw a steep decline in population numbers and catches for abalone both out of the Channel Islands and along the coast. It wasn't until about the 1980s where the numbers really dropped off and populations were essentially decimated. This left white abalone with numbers essentially less than 0.1% of their pre-exploitation population rates. The reef is one of the partners in the organizations currently involved in trying to bring back white abalone populations. This work with an endangered species was a great opportunity to really appreciate the efforts that are being put in to saving a species that is so valuable for the waters we are around right now. Bodega Marine Laboratory is currently the headquarters of the White Abalone Captive Breeding Program. One of our local partners is the Cultured Abalone Farm. And since 2006, the Sea Center has been a part of the White Abalone Captive Breeding Program. And now I have the opportunity to carry this project forward here at such a unique location. Since this is where the southern warm currents and the northern cold currents mix, this makes this area very biologically and ecologically diverse. Not only do we have species central to this area, but we get the extension of both the northern and the southern ranges mixing right at this area. So we get a number of different species that you wouldn't see together anywhere else in the world. The Sea Center is so unique, not only for the communities that we reach, but for the experiences guests can have when they come here. We have such great access to the ocean. They have the opportunity to use instruments to reach down and grab stuff from the bottom. They can test sediment samples. They can test water quality, live dive opportunities. One of the essential duties of my job is actually to go under the wharf and collect animals for our exhibits. But the husbandry required to maintain this facility is a lot of work. A lot of the work that we do happens behind the scenes. What you see is a very small portion of the work that goes into our jobs. It's often a misconception that majority of our work is feeding the animals or cleaning the tanks. But in reality, this isn't the case. Most of the work when it comes to husbandry in general is developing the life support systems. And this is even before you can introduce the animal into the tank. This may come as a surprise to a lot of people who are used to just looking through the viewing window. There's a significant amount of plumbing and mechanical requirements that happen daily. This job is far dirtier than you would imagine. <laughs> Our main system functions by pulling water from the end of the wharf and is then delivered throughout all of our tanks and stored within our storage tanks underneath the wharf. 
we have a significant amount of redundancy built into our systems. One example of this is our intake lines located out at the end of Stern's Wharf. The Aquarius team has to regularly maintain some of these storage and filtration systems. Every few months, we'll switch our intake lines and clear out one of them to ensure that we're pulling the best water through the clearest lines we can. While one is sitting by on standby, we have the other one in operation, and this gives us the flexibility to switch between the two in case we need to service any of our equipment. The intake line that's on standby is the one that will develop a lot of growth, and that's the one that needs to be cleared out before we can switch our lines back over. A lot of this growth will be anoxic mud that doesn't have the chance to get oxygenated. We'll have larval animals settle inside of our tubes, a lot of mussels, some barnacles. We've even found an octopus within one of our intake lines. All the water that flows through the sea center is filtered, but the white abalone get the deluxe version. Since the white abalone are an endangered species, we take extra precautions to ensure that their life support systems have exactly what they need. Some of these elements that we control for are temperature, filtration, and UV sterilization to prevent withering syndrome and other sort of diseases and infections. To control for all these variables that the white abalone may encounter, they're actually on a closed system isolated from our main system. When you have an endangered species involved, this requires an extensive plan and safety protocols for all of our 12 partners with the White Abalone Captive Breeding Program. These plans and protocols are developed based on their biological and physiological needs. It's important that we understand these animals' biology and physiology to give them the best care that we can. In the early developmental stages of abalone, they will begin their life as a free-floating planktonic larvae, and as they continue to develop and mature, then they'll settle onto the substrate and start growing that big muscular foot and that shell, which are two very identifiable features. Back in 2019 was our first attempt at settling our white abalone, so where we get them in their larval stage and they'll settle onto the substrate. When Tommy Wilson, the former husbandry manager, and I first received these abalone, they were essentially smaller than the eye can see. After introducing them into our grow out troughs, we thought it was a flop and we thought we were unsuccessful in settling, which isn't that uncommon and it wasn't until several months later that we found small abalone that had settled that were maybe half the size of a grain of rice. We had been looking for them in the grow out troughs that were designed to hold them, but instead we found them in the underneath holding basin that holds our life support equipment for those troughs. Tommy and I were both really surprised and very excited. <laughs> Since our involvement has changed so many times since we initially became involved in the White Abalone Captive Breeding Program, there's been a lot of surprises and a lot of troubleshooting that's gone into caring for these species. Seahorses also require a great deal of time and care. They require feedings just as much as we do, two to three times a day. Our isolated, confined systems, such as our two white abalone tanks, our corals, and our seahorses, are some of the most time-consuming and difficult tanks to take care of. Although it's hard work to care for these white abalone, it's worth it. Our goal is to improve their numbers, not only in captivity, but to outplant so they can continue on their populations in the wild. White abalone reproduce in a method called broadcast spawning, where they'll release their gametes, their eggs and sperm into the water column, and then they'll mix and form viable larvae. In order for reproduction to be successful, they need to be in high densities within six feet of each other. White abalone spawning attempts actually happen within the white abalone captive breeding program. Back in 2013, here at the Sea Center, we attempted our first spawning attempt and we've continued on for several years beyond that as well. For these spawning attempts, we'll take this opportunity to assess our animals, take their gonad scores, take a lot of their growth measurements, and then we'll put them in a set of chemicals to stress them just enough for them to release their gametes without causing any sort of harm. 
Here at the Sea Center, we raise our white abalone either from a larval stage or from a newly settled stage until they are big enough to outplant. And then our partners through the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration will outplant them. These abalone still may face a number of threats once we outplant them, although we are doing our best to try to create the most genetically diverse crosses with the abalone that we spawn, we may still run into some problems with having enough genetic diversity that if some sort of catastrophic event, such as climate change, ocean acidification, a disease that comes through, this may still have a significant impact on essentially all of the abalone that we outplant. And it is still worth it for us to restore some of their numbers not only for their ecological significance, but for their cultural significance, their historical significance, and their past economic significance. And they're very cute. <laughs> I don't know if you can cut that out, but. So hopefully the takeaway from all of this is that you can have a greater appreciation, not only for white abalone, but for the work of an aquarist, the work that's done behind the scenes. Although sometimes these abalone can look like painted fingernails in a tank, this is actually an international collaboration to try to bring a species back.